you guys. I decided to go ahead and uh, <coughs> tan this deer skin I got the other day. When I got hit, I picked up. Um, I'm kind of just looking at it now. I mean, it's got some holes here and there, and it's really stinks. And uh, I think there's some salvageable portions on here. Um, I'm playing around with the idea of doing some hair on tans. I get asked pretty frequently about how I would go about tanning deer hides if I'm leaving the hair intact. And I have a couple specific projects in mind that I would use a couple uh, pelts for. Um, I want to make a vest for one for when I'm out hunting. Keep my core a little bit warmer. That will go underneath my regular hunting clothes. And uh, I'm thinking uh, that might be a good use for them. I don't typically do a lot of hair on tans. Um, deer hair is kind of tubular and hollow and it, it uh, snaps a lot and it sheds. But it's, it's warm hair and uh, for my uses for beating around in the woods and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I wear my stuff. I use it hard, so um, I'm not too worried about it. So I don't know how this is going to turn out. It's kind of, it's been, it, the deer was probably dead five days, I figured, before I got to it. So, I mean, it's, uh, I know the hide's all right, but it's just, there's a lot of extra work because of the holes and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, in keeping with the theme, uh, the stone tool theme, I have my old, uh, I don't know if this is picking up on the camera. I have my old uh, Abo Skinner here. I use this on my uh, high, primitive hide tanning videos. It works really good for removing the hair and some of the membrane, actually, or the uh, grain, which is pretty tough normally, even with regular tools. So I'm going to see how it fares against this frozen meat. This is going to be pretty tough. I might be abusing this tool a little bit, but I just thought, keeping with the whole stone tool, Abo tool theme with this hide, I might as well just run with it. So I'm going to get set up here and see how this works. Okay guys, so I'm bringing you in here a little closer so you can see what's going on. This hide is tough. I mean, probably because it's so frozen and for how long I've been letting it sit around, this sinuous type membrane is just glued to the hide and it's really tough. I just gave it a few test scrapes here. And uh, every once in a while you find hides that are tough like this, where you have a lot of membrane, a lot of like, you know, kind of like sinuous type fiber that's locking everything down. And this is one of them. So this is a really, it's probably like a your tough case scenario. And uh, I don't know if I'll do the whole deer with this tool. It would definitely work if I worked at it for a while. I could definitely plow some of this off, get under it, like I'm doing right now. And I could actually, you can just see how tough that is. That's all, it's glued on there. That's a tough, so this is a tough case. So I'll probably end up whipping out my steel tool and that's still gonna be tough. This is just a tough deer, but definitely doable. Even with this tool, I just wanted to kind of throw this in here. I haven't used this tool in a while and spots it takes it off pretty easy like right there so I think a lot of it has to do with just the fiber that's on this hide and it's frozen and I've, been, I've had it sitting out here for a while now so I figure this is about two weeks old now but uh, I just want to throw that out there if there's anyone that wants to see maybe a hair on uh, tan demonstration let me know uh, I guess determine how in depth I get with it but uh, I thought I'd mention that because I have been asked and I'm going to be doing a couple here. I just got recently got a new hide supplier, so um, I I have a whole new stash of hides, and I can get choice number one hides any as many as I want now. So I'm super pumped about that. I just met up with him the other day, and it's pretty sweet. So I'm finally going to be able to make some new clothes and get back in action. So, like I said, let me know if you want to see maybe a hide on tan deer t deer skin. And uh, we'll go from there. After this, I think I'm going to go play with that deer body. I want to get some uh, ulna pressure flakers. So if you want to watch, you can see me do that. I'll dissect that deer a little bit. But uh, I'm going to play with this for now. So I'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay, so I thought I'd show this real quick. This hide's tough. It's basically all the meat, all the sinew, all the uh, membrane 
has turned to beef jerky on this hide and it's it's tough. I'm going to use my little elbow tool on the next hide after I hydrate the hide first so it'll make it a lot easier. This hide is dry and frozen so it's very very tough even with my steel tool. But I just want to show this real quick. I have this really cool skinny knife and whenever I'm out here tanning a hide I'm always trimming it up while I'm doing it. So certain spots like this that are really kind of on the outer goofy fringe and I'm not really going to tan or it's on the legs which makes papery not so soft and supple leather. I usually just trim it up now and I don't have to work with it. I want to show Paleo Man's knife here. I'm just going to cut that right off. You could think of this membrane as just like a fibrous shield you know, that covers that whole hide. And you can just think how that would really impede, you know, whatever you're trying to soak this hide with, brains or whatever. Kind of like a barrier. So that's why you hear guys that are tanning so fussy about the membrane. There's a ton of it on this hide. And it was kind of glued and frozen to everything. So I managed to get a lot off. Be a little bit more to scrape later, but you want to get at some point that off because that's think of that as a barrier. But this hide's coming. Going down the end here, so just about done. Okay guys, here's the uh, finished scraped hide. Very challenging piece. I had to work that hard for a good 20-25 minutes, so give me an idea how hard that was. Um, still a pretty decent size. I don't know. Two pieces might make a vest. I'm not the widest section down here by the rope. Put that by the shoulders, it might work, so I think there might be use for this hide as far as tanning. I use all my hides regardless, even the junky ones, because I make raw hide and stuff, so. Just look at that, and now I'm going to go over here and play with this, uh, put this here. I'm going to use that again, because I don't like, uh, not using something when I'm set out to use it, so. The next hide, that's going abo. So i got to sneak to the woods here. There's a dead deer over here. It's pretty, pretty dead now at this point, a couple weeks. And, uh. This is what I'm after right here. You kind of see this elbow. That's the ulna bone there. And uh, I'm going to try to dig this out. This is going to be pretty tough. This stuff's like I said, it's like beef jerky. So I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just test this knife real quick just to see. See what I'll do here. Wow, this is frozen. So plan B is uh, something else. Actually, my uh, this is my hand axe for my uh, stone tool bow. I call it my stone pool bow cache. I saved all the tools, the, the main ones I used a lot. This was a piece of Texas. I, I went through two hand axes making that bow, and a whole bunch of jasper flakes that were really cool. I posted some pictures on my Google Plus thing uh, of the stone bow cache as I call it but here's a lower section of the limb here right in here is what I'm after so I gotta dig through this somehow and get to that without breaking it and I want some beef jerky oh all right give me a minute all right so I'm just digging through this here I just have a piece of city and I shaved away all that forearm meat. And uh, you just have to be really careful when you get down to this stage because this is a very thin, small ulna bone. And that's why it works so good for, uh, you know, finish flaking and retouch. And uh, I use them all the time when I do nap. I'm really itching to get back into napping, so that's why I'm kind of after these tools. Um, so... It's kind of fused to the bone next to it with all the connective tissue and then at this joint here. So you have to really be careful. So I'm kind of trying to separate the two with the sharp flake. And at the very end of it, you can just bust it off because it's really kind of a funny shape. And you'll end up, you know, shaping a point down on it anyway. So I'm about ready to try to pry this out of here. 
don't want to break it off too short. This is kind of a smaller one. But uh, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, see, this is kind of a tough, small one. It's really green right now. But uh, there's a mess of stuff right here on this. Uh, there's a little bit of bone residue left on there. I have to get that off. But these work really good for toothpicks, too, actually. Okay guys, here you have your little Ulna Flaker. It's a small one. Uh, it's better than what I had. I just I wear them down to little nubs and then you don't they're no good. So as this thing shortens and dolls, you just kinda I kinda reshape it depending on what I have to get into on the stone. But uh there's a little bit of joint residue there where the other bone was connected. You can either what you wanna usually do is just sand that smooth because your hand's gonna fit in here, you don't want it cutting you up, but it's pretty clean right now. Bone's kind of funny, it kind of cures, and uh, I don't really know the best way to cure it. Sometimes I leave them outside in the dirt, sometimes I just, sometimes I just find them and they work fine, and sometimes I work them green, so, um, you kind of just have to play with it and see how it works. Can't really give you an exact thing on it, but, uh, this should work fine. So I'm going to dig the other one out, and then I'm good to go. So thanks for watching this long video. Hopefully uh, it was somewhat interesting. And uh, I'll see you next time.